Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Derek Luke, welcome. What's good? How you feeling? Bless, man. Bless. Man, good to meet you. When you walked in, I was I just you talked and I was like, man, I feel like Puffy just walked in. Oh, said, oh, I'm hungry. Hey. Put me butt naked in the jungle. Hey, Come on, yeah. wearing a chinchilla. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hate that? No, man. You know, I yo, I, I actually I respect. I respect Puff. I, I I wanted to actually just like after digging a little bit, I wanted to play his story, but mm. I realized like it was because I felt like that was the element that was missing from the neighborhood. You know, like I went and got <laughs> I went and got um, a manicure yesterday, and I was in Manhattan, and I saw a lot of black and brown kids, and I got in this conversation with them about what have they learned in business, and mm. most the time it's flatline and i felt like puff had this entrepreneurial vision vibe that maybe the studios wasn't trying to pull lift that story mm -hmm. but i felt like you know the man that can you know bring in three to four hundred million dollars I, I felt like our generation needed to know more about that you know what i'm saying so but i i love playing puff Cause it's an no, what you're saying is true. Cause it's an energy, right? It don't necessarily have to be entertainment, right? It's just a certain level of discipline and mm -hmm. dedication, and you know, work ethic that guys like Diddy have that can be applied to any young person from the hood in whatever industry they choose to go in. Yeah, yeah, true. So you know, I know coming up, like you know, for me, working in the sneaker store was like it was lit, like in in high school. But however, you know, there's many there's many things that I felt like, man, I. I, I wish I could have like put under my belt things mm -hmm. I didn't know. Maybe I could have, you know, focus on having a sneaker store, even though I was pursuing acting, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like understanding what sneakers and the culture mean. And so, yeah, yeah, I just, you know, stuff like that catch my eye. Now for people that don't know, we're talking about, of course, the movie Notorious. That's right. Uh -huh. So so how was, since since we're starting there, how was doing uh -huh. that movie? How did you get casted? Break that down for people that don't know. Um, The way I got cast was, uh, I was I was in the city doing some um, press, and my publicist at the time, I guess she was friends with Puff, but uh, one of Puff's guards since word that they wanted to holler, and I was like, "Word, okay." And you're from yeah. Jersey, so you, yeah. you you pretty much grew up with yeah. Bad Boy all your life, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, we met him, greeted, nothing to it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think he said he may have had something coming up. And that was it. It was real brief. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long after that I was in LA, I was on Rodeo and I heard somebody calling me one of my characters name. Somebody like um, yelled out the car and they called me booby from Friday night lights. Mm -hmm. And I looked and it was puff and I was like mad shocked. And we were talking still nothing. And, um, uh, I get a call. He was calling you. Are you sure he wasn't saying booty? Uh, yo, oh, shut, uh, yo, yo. yo, shut up, what? man. <laughs> shut up, man. What? Puff a wild boy now. Uh, hey, I ain't going there. You want to be bad? I ain't going. Going to be bad there y'all go. <laughs> to be bad. Oh, that's, oh, that's where I'm at, right? Okay. You forgot where you was at? Oh, man. So, it, um, long story short, I, I get a call. Um, I had just... Uh, I got a call, and it was like, yo, we doing uh, Notorious. I was like, ah... Uh, I was like, ah, nah, that ain't that ain't really for me. I was like, let somebody else rock that, and then why you um, want to do it at first? Just too much heat, too much cultural pressure, mm -hmm. not enough time to get into the character, mm -hmm. and because um, they they was ready to go like um, right there, and I was like, nah, nah, it's okay. Then I got a call from Puff, and he was like, yo, you know, um, what name did he call you this time when he called you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember, man. <laughs> but I was just, you know, I was, I was, you know, flattered first to get a call from him. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how he got my number, and and um, I was like, nah, man, I'm a, I'm a pass. And then it came back again. And like, so you told Puff, nah, I'm not doing. It, I'm a pass. Yeah, but because it was like it was re it was really in honor of the East. You know what I mean? It was what, really... does, what does Puff say? Because Puff don't take no. You know what? He he was he was kind of he was kind of gracious. He was like, yo. He was like, you know, I right, well, you know, I, you know, maybe maybe not this one, may, you know, but you know, maybe we'll connect on another one, mm -hmm. and and somehow I don't know, it was a third call, second call, and uh, he called, and I was like, 
you know, me and my wife was like, well, maybe this is a sign. Maybe this is a divine sign. And so we, we was like, I, I think we pray it's supposed to do this. And we went forward. Right. Right. And, and, and I know you're here to promote, you know, the crossover for Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. because I've been watching you for so many years. So I'm, I'm really a fan. Mm -hmm. My favorite Derek Luke movie, the movie that introduced me to Derek Luke was Antoine Fisher. Oh, word. Mm -hmm. okay. And Antoine Fisher was so powerful for me at the time because, you know, I, I got touched on by uh, my, my mm. uh, a, a woman in my family, you know what I'm saying, when I was like eight years old, right? And I never had seen that portrayed in a film mm -hmm. in that way. But more so, man, when you go back and you watch that movie now, man, the layers of trauma mm -hmm. that y'all pulled back in Antoine Fisher, you know, Denzel being a psychotherapist. Yeah. Now in our community, we have those conversations about mindfulness and mental health. Back then, mm -hmm. we didn't catch it. Yeah. Was that a hard role to play? And is, a, is it a hard role for you to watch and revisit? No, it's for some reason, man. Antoine was probably my easiest role. Uh, maybe it was because Denzel was there. Um, uh, maybe because I had lived such a life of experience, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. It's 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 real easy. I think it's the role that I tried to push away from because mm. I'm like, well, what do I do now? Mm. You know, like what's 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 my legacy? And a lot of bios started coming, and I'm like, man, that's uh, you know, I don't want to do that because I came to LA to do slapstick. I came to, to do LA. comedy. You are, yeah, yeah, to have a show like Martin. You oh, know, wow, wow, yeah, wow, I, wow. I didn't come to do. I wasn't interested in movies. I just wanted the TV show, make a hundred thousand dollars, and just rock. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, you know. That wasn't what God had for me. Wow. Yeah. I mean, most comedians are great at drama, though. Mm, Word. Yeah. If yeah. You think about it. Yeah. 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 They had that. They had that um, dual. That dual. Those dual levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you don't got to answer this because it might be too personal. But I just always wondered, how much did you have? How much experience did you have with that role? Because I like when <laughs> I saw that. I'm yeah. like, God, that is, I, I, I know that feeling that he's yeah going through, and I hadn't seen nobody even present that on camera until that movie and then Tyler Perry when he was on Oprah talking about a woman in his family touching mm. um how much experience <laughs> um I had personal experience with it mm -hmm. um I don't I don't know that I connected uh triggers and traumas from my experience to Antoine I think um part of the emotions that came out was more of a cry <clears throat> that I had to God about who I was, what my purpose was. Mm. And cause I, you know, I'm looking at Sydney, I'm looking at Denzel and I wanted to be the, my generation, what they was to theirs. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure how you do that. I didn't mm -hmm. have the stage training. I didn't have all that. And I felt like one of the, uh, things that I realized and like you hear the hip hop like we had a lot of commonality like no fathers present mm -hmm. and I, um, a lot of that for me came out from like not having a you know father not having a guardian so it was yeah yeah I ha I do have personal experience um, but I felt like it was coming from like a deeper soul searching place to mm -hmm. find my place in the world in acting and it was based on a true story. And that's that's what I love it so much. Cause it's like, man, the world be so hard on black men. And mm -hmm. some people might just look at that character, Antoine, and he wasn't a character, a real person, but Antoine is being violent, yeah. you know, and temperamental for no reason. But there's uh -huh. a whole backstory yeah. as to how a person becomes like that. that was, that's crazy. Cause I, I met this producer um, right after I did it. And he said something to me interesting. he was like, yo, you know, um, I really respect how Denzel uh, directed that and directed you. He says, because if I directed that, I would have probably made you try to make you a little more passive. Mm. And I was like, what? Mm. He mm. was like, yeah. He was like, you know, I saw it and I felt like he was, the character was, you know, strong and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had that take. And, and he was like, I learned a lot from, from that. And so when you were saying about black men and, you know, in the world and what we deal with, mm -hmm. yeah. It, that triggered that conversation I had with this producer. You I feel like, like that film was slept on, because I do. I feel like that's that that's like an upper echelon filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I think we should hold that film in higher regard. Yeah, I think it's um if if anything, it, it was an early film that helped us, you know, dive deep into what what our hurts are, mm -hmm. you know, and um, but creatively, I you know, it was my first joint. I, 
I had so much more to learn. So, you know. Is it hard to watch because you might just feel like you wasn't good in the movie? Oh, <laughs> you no. you weren't great, by the way. No, no I, I just, you know, I let, I kind of let people make their own decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I keep hearing like, you know, Denzel, like, I think I asked him before, I was like, yo, what's your favorite movie? He was like, the next. So I took that mentality on like, forget that, you know, let me, let me try to figure out what's next for me. Mm -hmm. How was working with Denzel? Amazing, man. It's like, because like, that, that, because I mean, that was your first film, and he's he was Denzel. Yeah, yeah, and he had just won for Trainer Day, and um, were always, you nervous? He remind me like of my uncles, and he, <laughs> he never like he never had that. He never like created a space where where I'm I'm Mr. Washington. Because when I first walked into the audition, he was like, "Yo, I'm Denzel," and I was like kind of like made the smirk like yo I know he was like well you know not everybody watch movies so I was like dang he's like he's mad he's down to earth mm -hmm. but but Denzel to me he's like the you know like the Phil Jackson behind the camera man mm -hmm. yeah speaking of Phil Jackson you play a father coach mm -hmm. in, in the crossover right yeah well, the crossover is a movie that you got you you're up here for yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. what, is, what track did you do that role um the family unit okay okay um I think you know since I was a kid, I was always like sentimental. I always like uh, admired the family, and I didn't think that there was enough family represented on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was a great opportunity because I always was looking for a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, or I was a mentee chasing a mentor uh, to be in a role of a mentor. Uh, you know, and influencing the mentees. I just thought, you know, be interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, to take take that on. Are you familiar with the book? Nah, uh, and that's what excited me too, because there was a, you know, that that book is credited with what, like two million kids reading it, Newberry mm -hmm. winner, and one of the, you know, like plugs of the book is that kids who normally didn't read, is re you know, started reading. And I grew up, like a lot of us in the inner city, and like until my last year, you know, I would hear people talk about, you know, um, a high school, I went to more diverse school. They were like, yo, you know, I read this book this weekend. I'm like, you read a whole book in a week? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like what? I'm like, and I thought like how many kids that was left back in, in the hood. And I was like, yo, there was no prerequisite. There was no culture of like reading. And I'm like, man, that's, that's the difference. No, that's that's where we at. My know? mom was an English teacher, so it was a little. Oh, oh, so she, okay. she made me read books when I was young. And mm -hmm. we had the Book It program in South Carolina. I don't know if y'all had the Book It nah. program. Mm -hmm. yeah, you had to read four books, you get a free pizza from Pizza Hut. What? Oh, man. That's why I used to read so much Judy Bloom. Nah. Judy Bloom and Beverly Clearly. Yeah, man. See, How would they know if you read or not? I think, do, did you have to do book reports? Oh. I don't remember. I mean, it, it was the honest, I, maybe it was the honest system, but I, you, I wasn't lying about it. You oh, know what right? I mean? Oh. Yeah. Nah, gee, nah. I, don't, I think maybe in New York they would have lied about that. They would have went there. Black. I, I think it was book reports. reports. I'm not sure. I think you had to do a book report. I don't remember, but it was something you had to do to prove because mm -hmm. you had to fill out a bubble or the teacher filled it out for you. Somebody filled it out for you. Oh, where? Yeah. Oh man, nah, man. I, I think maybe I read a book in, in four years of high school. That's because that's all the homework. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like all the chapters put together. Maybe that was a book. Damn. But but nah, I don't I don't remember that. So. I kind of felt like, you know, the mm -hmm. crossover would be a good sports family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I thought it was like a good antidote. Now LeBron produced this, right? <clears throat> yeah. How how hands on was LeBron with this? Um you... uh well, his two producers um was on set. He wasn't on set. Um it was just the fact of his legacy and what his name meant to the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever play sports? You got them big ass hands. Oh, uh, no, nah, G. You slapping the shit out people nah, while yeah, you were playing nah, football or something. Nah, or something. nah man. I, I, I came more athletic as I started getting into acting. My mom didn't want us to play. Uh, my brother got tackled. My older brother got tackled when he was a teenager. Um, dude broke both his hips, so my mom was like, no sports. Damn. So hold yeah. on, Derek. You didn't read. You didn't play sports. How did you escape the hoods? <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, do that. Do that. Uh, do, hey, man. It, it was, you know, that classic mom. Um, mm -hmm. This is my house. Mm -hmm. um, you was required to go to church. Oh, yeah, right. And, um, you know, just, yeah, and watching videos. Mm -hmm. You know, watching watching uh, videos after work. Um, didn't want to go to the club because, you know, Heineken costs like $6 and I'm only making like $150. <laughs> you're from Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm from Jersey. Okay, what part? Jersey City. Um, Jersey, Jersey City. City. Okay. 
So, you know, I went to the club. You know, I'm holding the Heineken, trying to keep it warm. I mean, trying to keep it cool. So, you know, the studs don't go out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, wait, I had to get $6 to get here for gas. I had to put this this whole joint on layaway. I'm like, nah, this ain't for me, man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Peppermint Lounge, get me a, some food, and rent a movie, <laughs> I'm good. Now yeah. you still got to audition for for parts, or you you don't audition anymore? Um, when it's when it's parts where maybe it's something that I didn't show, or a part where you, you know, uh, about going to another level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Somebody just sent me something with De Niro, mm -hmm. and um, I was just like, nah, it ain't for me. And, Damn. Uh, Some yeah. people will see the name and be like, oh, De Niro, I got to do this. Yeah, no, but I'm at the. I'm, I think I'm at the part like in my career where I let other. I let other people drive. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, people used to say, yo, it's all about pedigree, pedigree. But I would do pedigree, and it, but it wouldn't really gel with me. You what do you mean for us, us non-actors? Well, pedigree is just like who you who you in a scene with or who's gotcha. your cast. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like, I thought it was artistic, but it wasn't culturally relevant. Gotcha. Right, 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 you know right. what I mean? So that, that's, that's where I'm at now. I want to do both. I wonder anything? about that, though. I wonder about culturally relevant stuff because a lot of the culturally relevant stuff doesn't necessarily push the culture forward and I mm. feel like it puts black people in a box mm -hmm. doing a lot of stereotypical yeah. shit as opposed to like some real groundbreaking artsy move yeah. us forward as a community type roles. Yeah you're right I'm, I'm glad you had that kickback because you know uh, when I came in the game like just the movies I did it was I guess it was cutting edge because there wasn't all, it was only a handful of black right. dudes in the game. But I think, you know, I think there's a handful of guys that do uh, cultural mask productions where it touches every lane. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and when you're sort of in that independent space for a long time, you just kind of want to venture out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna ask: Is there any part that you? decided not to do that it was like damn i should have did that later or a part that just blew up you was like damn i missed that one um i mean there's, there's a couple but i name one ah. <laughs> um well i re i'm not really i think the more nah because i because that other actor that did <laughs> <laughs> Nah, cause that other actor that did it, man, he, you know, he did a great job. But I, I, I knew coming. But maybe in, it just wasn't for you. And it, it, it is exactly. So what, what movie was that? Just wasn't for you that took off. And it was like, damn. See, I can't say that without, cause you're gonna know who the other joint. Yeah, cause yeah, it doesn't yeah, mean he did yeah. bad. It just means no, it no. He, as a matter of fact, he he he, he killed it. He, he killed it. But I had to go on in. I said, yo, I'm like, nah, that ain't. And I, I was like, I know that's gonna hit, but it ain't for me. You know, let let me pass. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, um, you know, uh, Terrence Howard used to always say, um, you know, he, and I know Terrence, but Terrence used to like sometimes talk about Antoine Fisher, mm -hmm. and a lot of people was passionate about that that joint. Well, um, what's the joint he did? The, the pimp joint. Oh, yeah. flow. B. Now, are you supposed to be the pimp? Nah, cause you know you get sent these scripts early. I'm yeah. like, nah, G, that ain't like. I'm not even interested. He was like, I did it. I'm not even. It. I'm not even interested. Ain't nothing about that. And with Terrence, Terrence body that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean. He body it. So, so you was supposed to do hustle and flow. Nah, G. I couldn't but, see nobody else doing hustle and flow but Terrence. That, <laughs> there, I can't lie. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You can't say mine. Yeah, yeah, mine. Mine. You know what, mine. What, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's that. It's that respect. Like, you know, I've, I heard a couple of dudes were like, yo, man, like, I wanted to do Antoine. I just don't say nothing. I'm like. Nah, that was your role. I'm like. Oh, yeah, that was your, nah, that was your I'm like, role. I'm like, word. I'm like, I get it. But Hustle and Flow, man, that's not. That ain't me. Mm -hmm. You know? But mm -hmm. this brother got to go, too. So. Yeah. Well, one more thing. I know you got an independent film coming out called Rare Objects with Katie Holmes. What do you enjoy more, the indie films or big blockbuster stuff like the crossover? Um, I like, I like, I mean, I like. I like rare objects because uh, I mean I like both, but indie films you got that freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you know with Katie, she's an actor and she creates this you know environment that you can like that you can fly. And y'all work together a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not the typical studio projects that come at you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, that's the dope about the independent space.
Or they, I, yeah, they, you got to come back up here and build with us a little bit more. One nah, day. No doubt, man. I know you're on the run doing the press thing. But and yeah. I got to say, um, it's dope. This is my first time here, but mm -hmm. I love the way people react when they say The Breakfast Club. What you uh, mean? Uh, it's almost like, um, you know, like when publicist is here and before I like, sometimes you're in a retainer with your publicist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming on, we were discussing like mass, cultural and and uh, you know, and sort of business uh, markets. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that, like, so many people talk about y'all in this regard. And I love the fact that, like, talent has to come through here. Mm -hmm. It has to come through your gift. Mm -hmm. And when people come through here, it's almost like a crowning on them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank and you. And so I, I, I just, I just want to. You know what I'm saying? Like you got y'all, y'all have that respect. You oh, know what I mean? Love. And, and so, it's black, and it's black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so I just Thank bless you, to y'all. Appreciate on that. it. Yeah, yeah we, so I much. want you to come back just so we can dig into your your, your career a little more. It's actually our fault because we ran a little over on it. It's all good. Another interview, but thank you, man, for yeah, coming. Appreciate definitely. Thank uh, you, man. And thank good luck with everything. Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. And make sure you check out the crossover. That's right. On Disney Plus starring Derek Luke. That's right. It's Derek Luke. It's I'll the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.